Hello, quick video today about rebuilding or fixing this temperature controlled stir plate. So, originally this had the rubber shed controller that came with it. In here, that's this. That was basically unable to hold the temperature vaguely close to where we needed it. So, that's been pulled out. Uh, all the stir plate stuff is still in place. So, if we look inside here, our power comes in, let's get a pointy thing. Our power comes in here, it goes through this transformer here. And all this side was all done in really obvious green wires to make it really easy to tell what's going on. That's controlling the motor up here, which spins the magnets, which you can see down there, wobbling to and fro. That side should still be all the same. Now what I've done is on the other side, I'm swapping in one of these PID controllers that happens to fit the gap precisely. I believe that's an 803 uh, controller uh, with an SSR on the output. And that then goes up there in here and will control the temperature theoretically. So uh, I've done most of the wiring so far. I just need to wire on the power supply for the PID. Uh, which is what these bits of wire lying around over here are for. Uh, so I thought I'd have a quick tour around while I was still had it open and then we will look at it properly when it's closed. But one really hard remaining challenge, these clips that are designed to hold the pit in place, I've got to get one underneath somehow and that's going to be interesting and challenging. Excellent. I'll show you it when it's up and running in a little bit. Hello and welcome back to a slightly epic, more epic, temperature controlled stir plate setup. Uh, first change from what I had when you saw me putting it together previously is I put in a temperature sensor, supposed to be PT100, that came off the internet. It, if you set it accurately at say zero degrees C in some lovely iced water, it was then five degrees off at 20 degrees C, so basically useless. Um, so I bought a slightly nicer one, which is now the one that's connected up there. And that appears to be, well, reasonably precise and with a little bit of offset, it's accurate, which is nice, sort of two things you need and it's accurate over quite a wide temperature range. It's an improvement. So after that minor struggle, I'll get you some new bits. Um, I then tried to get the whole thing working uh, and struggled. Um, this thing seems to be heating when it's supposed to be cooling, cooling when it's supposed to be heating. Uh, after a bit of fiddling around, I worked out that firstly it was set to control a fridge rather than a heater. Um, and secondly, uh, in its default state, it was set as a switched um, uh, controller like a um, uh, like the one I've got down here on the fridge. Um, no, I haven't got it there anymore. Um, like the one in my brewery control box, these things, he says, going down to have a look. Those little things, that's a switch controller. Um, so you need to change the mode, and that's hidden in some incredibly obscure menus. Um, controls of this are slightly odd. The instructions are obviously translated from the Chinese via the Serbo Croat, um, so are a little bit hard to actually understand. Uh, at the moment, it's trying to run an auto tune cycle, and I'm going to see what happens. Hopefully, we'll get it working properly shortly. Right, there's been probably about a week since the last video on the temperature controlled stir plate due to yet more technical problems. Uh, now it appears to be working properly and it's running a tuning cycle. So hopefully it will get all the parameters set correctly. Now, the issue I had was with the SSR. Originally I had one of these SSRs. I was slightly suspicious to start with since the output seems to be labeled out rut about the quality of this thing. And I was unfortunately proved right. Uh, under zero load, we had no, we were driving no heater off the output. It seemed to be working fine with just using a multimeter to test it. But as soon as you put a load on it of any kind, it just leaked so much that the um, heater never actually turned off. So the temperature just kept going up and up and up, whatever the pit it thought it was doing. So, Quick order for a new one off the interwebnet, and now we have a slightly better quality one. Uh, they look like the one, the white ones you usually see sold with ink birds. Um, seems to be working perfectly. 
So hopefully we'll be able to get a starter on this soon. Not that I really need the heating in this weather, uh, but it's a reassuring to have it working properly. Excellent. Hopefully that's the end of that project, and the next time we will see this, it will be actually running a starter.